Hey there, in this uh, video we're going to show you how to build a Easy Builder plugin using C Sharp. So first make sure that you have Visual Studio installed <coughs> and uh, you can get it free from Microsoft's website as a trial. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new project and we're going to choose C Sharp and we're going to choose uh, Windows Desktop and Windows Form uh, class library. Okay, we're going to create a class library. Now, locate a, uh, a place on your hard drive that you want to save this plugin. In this case, I'm going to put it in my plugins folder. I'm going to call it C Sharp Example Plugin. Click OK. Oh, <laughs> okay, you apparently can't put sharp in there, so I'll put the word sharp. There we go. Okay, so we're going to want to add. Uh, first, actually, let's delete the class. It creates a class automatically for us. We don't need that class. And now we're going to click on References, and we're going to click Add, and we're going to add a reference to the Easy Builder and Easy BDL, DLL file. That is inside of your, here I'll show you, Program Files, Easy Robot, Easy Builder, and Easy Builder EXE. And we're going to get the same for the EZB DLL file. There we go. Now we're going to click OK. So now the references are added. If you click on other references, you're going to notice that copy local is set to false. Okay? That's because when you run your program, when it compiles it, it doesn't copy those DLL files into your, into your application folder, which is exactly what we don't want to do for the files, the references we just added. So I'm going to choose EZB. I'm going to choose that to be copy local false, and I'm going to do the same for Easy Builder, copy local false. Okay, so now let's add our form. So we're going to click New Form, and we're going to give it a form name. We'll call it Form Main, and there it is. Now you can see it's got the default gray background and the minimize and maximum buttons and an icon. It doesn't look anything like uh, an easy builder plugin or an easy builder control, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to view the code. So, right click on that form and click it's like a view code. And now, what we're going to do here is make it look pretty. You notice that it's inheriting the type of form. Well, we're going to change that. We're going to change that to easy builder dot uc forms dot plugin master. Now, when we look at the form, See it changes and suddenly looks like an uh, easy builder control. You have your help button, you have your X to close it, and you have your white background and there's no icon. So it looks more like what a control would look like. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a button. And this button is going to make it a little bigger here. Is going to first we're going to make it look better and we're going to make it a flat style. And now we're going to change its text to the word forward. We're going to have this button make the robot move forward. I'm going to scroll down and give it a more appropriate name, this button. I'm going to call the button button forward. And now I'm going to double click on the button. And it created the, the method, the function that will be executed when the user pushes the button called forward click. Now we're going to make the robot move forward. Now, as you know, with Easy Builder, you don't care, like the software doesn't care how the robot moves. All it needs to know is moving forward or moving left or moving right or moving up or moving down will be controlled by the type of robot that it's running. So if it's a humanoid, it'll walk forward. If it's a flying drone, it'll fly forward. If it's a, rover, a robot with rover tracks, it'll roll forward. Okay, so we're going to just use the generic forward command, which is inside of Easy Builder in the namespace, inside of the class Easy Builder Manager, and of course we're going to use Easy Bs. And now you can have it's an, an array of Easy Bs because you can have multiple Easy Bs on one project. So we're going to specify the first Easy B because that's always the 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 uh, Easy B that is being used for movement panels. And now we're going to type in dot, and we're going to locate the movement class, and go forward. OK, 
Okay, so that's going to tell the robot to move forward. Now we can take this button and we can add another button beneath it and do the exact same process. And this time we'll say the word stop and we'll change its flat style to be flat. And of course we'll give it a more appropriate button name, button stop. And now we'll view the code. Oh, sorry, I guess we'll double click on the button and we'll do the same thing. Easy builder dot easy builder manager dot easy bees the first index of the easy bee dot movement dot stop there we go so now we have a button that moves forward we have a button that stops now if you have in the toolbox added the easy builder exe file as a reference which visual studio usually detects it but if you haven't you can add it yourself just by right clicking and saying choose items and add an easy builder but if it does, you're going to see all of these fancy user classes that Easy Builder has created. So these are all user controls that you can do tons of different things for. For example, there's something called a port button here, where when you push it, it'll bring up the Easy B, and you can select a port. Um, if you wanted to move servos, for example, you can do something here called uh, let's see a servo position, where you can have the user select a port and start sliding a servo. So you have all of these different features here. So I think what we're going to do here is let's add a let's add a, a port button here, and let's change the appearance to look like a flat. There we go. Let's give it a, a name, and we'll say select port. And also let's add what's called the hover help. Okay, This is very important. I want you guys always to be using these. You can place them all over your code and you can scroll down on the property for that. You can give it a name and give it some information. So when someone hovers over the question mark, it tells you what that button or what that feature does. So in this case, this button moves the robot forward. Okay, And then we'll add another one here, hover button hover and then we'll scroll down and of course this button makes the robot stop okay so here's our here's our control it's nothing super fancy it's our plugin but we are going to test it so the first thing we have to do in order to test it is we have to register this this plugin with the website with easy builder so we're going to go to the easy robot website and we're going to click on software, go to the plugins page, and we're going to create a new plugin for this control. And we're going to call this plugin uh, C Sharp Example Plugin. And now we're going to scroll down. We don't have to give any information here because we're just using this as a as a uh, development example right now. We'll click save. Now let's take a look, let's scroll back to the top, let's take a look at the plugins that I've created. And as you can see here I have a C Sharp example plugin, a C++ example plugin. And you see how they have a line through them and the other, some of the other ones don't. That's because these ones, this one here for example, this Oculus Rift plugin, is public. So I've made that plugin and I've set it to be public so other people can use it. The C Sharp plugin is not public, it's got a line through it. So we're going to go into our details of this plugin and you can see here that we have the ability to download the XML file. This is a file that we need to add into our project so that we can get the project to actually load in Easy Builder. So we're going to click download and then we're going to grab this file. I'm going to copy it into our clipboard. And now we're going to paste it into our project. And there it is. Now we have to give it a better name because when you if you download multiple, your browser is going to put little bracket ones beside it. So I'm going to delete the one and make it just plugin.xml. Now I want this plugin file to be copied always to the destination. Now I want to edit this plugin file because we need to put some information in here. Now some stuff's important. For example, the category type. If you put in a category type in here, when you go to add a plug, a control in Easy Builder, the category 
that this plugin belongs to will be here. So we're just going to leave it as beta for the time being. Now the DLL file name, this is important because in order for Easy Builder to know what your plugin is called, you have to give it a file name. It doesn't scan and find the file because there could be multiple DLL files in one folder. If you made a plugin that used a bunch of DLL files, for example, Easy Builder needs to know which one is the actual plugin. So what we're going to do here is we're going to build this project just so it creates a file. And you can see here our file has been created. So I'm going to copy this. Now you can also get the file from this folder that it's created as well. And now we're going to paste this file name into this XML document. I'm going to close the tag. There we go. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to use this GUID that's been generated. Now this is a unique GUID for my plugin. It'll be unique. Uh, no other person will have the same GUID. No other, no other plugin. So I'm going to take that GUID and I copied it into my clipboard. And I'm going to go to my hard drive. And I'm going to go to my C drive. Users. Public. And public documents. And then if you've already loaded Easy Builder, which you're going to have to do to create this, Easy Builder will automatically create an Easy Builder plugins folder for you. Now here we can right click, create a new folder, and we're going to paste in our GUID. There we go. So now this is our folder we want the actual uh, plugin to compile to. So we're going to right click up here, we're going to select and copy the full path here and now what we're going to do is we're going to tell this project to compile the program and output its files to that location. So we're going to right click on the project, go to our properties and we're going to go to our build tab here. And you can see the output path has already been defined. We're going to remove that output path and we're going to paste in our new output path. Okay. Now if you don't feel comfortable copying and pasting you can also push the browse button and you can browse through and get the path yourself. So there we go. So now we're going to close. Uh, close. Actually, we're not going to close this down. We're going to go to our um, application here. Make sure that our everything's set up. We want our .NET 4.5 to be set up. Class library. It all looks good. So now we're going to go down into our debug tab. Now this is important because you're going to want to test your plugin inside of Easy Builder, but you're going to want to test it with debug information so that if it ever crashes or if you ever get any errors, Visual Studio will tell you. So this will allow you to do that. You can now click on debug, click on start with an external program, and we're going to click this browse button and we're going to go to our C drive and we're going to go to our pro program files. We're going to go to our Easy Robot, Easy Builder, and we're going to choose Easy Builder as our debug program. So Easy Builder is going to be a host to the plugin so that whenever you run your plugin, if there's any errors or if you want to do any any step-by-step uh, -step instructions, step through code, you can do it all. So now we're going to close all this down, click save. So now when I click build, or sorry, debug, I can say start with debugging. It's going to run my project and it's going to load Easy Builder. So now that I'm an easy builder, I'm going to click Project, Add, and I'm going to scroll over to my plugins, and there's my C Sharp plugin that we just had created. You will also find it inside of the beta tab. So we're going to click on it, and there's our plugin. So to give you an example, we have our forward button, our stop button. We added this select port button just for fun. Let's push it, and you'll see it's going to pop up and ask us what port something's at. There we go. So you can see some of the user controls. Now, if I were to save this project and I were to call it my test project, and overwrite the one that I already have. There we go. Now, if I start a new project, now if I load that project I just loaded, there's my plugin. Okay, so if my plugin wasn't already installed, then and I had it uploaded and it was public then it would go to the internet and it would download the plugin for you. So any users you have that are using your plugin that don't have it installed or anyone loads a project that has your plugin, it'll go get it for you. 
So one way to tell to see that this is actually, these buttons are working, and because you can't see a robot in front of me here, I'm just going to add a, uh, a movement panel. I'll just go to H bridges and I'll add this general H bridge movement panel here. And I'll push forward, and as you can see, the, it lit up, push stop, and it lit up, forward, stop. So my plugin is controlling this whole project, it's, it's doing stuff. Okay, so I want you to uh, go into the plugins folder and click on the how to tutorial and go through all of this because this will tell you how to create a plugin pretty much what I have just done. Okay, and then when you want to start getting into how to save information with from your plugins information with the project, you can do so by viewing the this tab here, loading and saving configuration, how to move the robot, which I kind of just exampled to you here, how to move servos, and then this one's important, control binding, how to get other controls to talk to your control, and vice versa. And then finally, you have uh, things like dependencies, file, subfolders, and then com plugin compliance is important because this will tell you how to avoid things like lengthy GUI uh, pr thread processing, how to use timers correctly, how to do cross-thread invoking, you know, all of this. So I want you to read all of these different things before creating a plugin because you don't want your plugin to be rejected, right? And finally, if you ever have questions or if you're ever really curious on the plugins I've created, view all the plugins I've created because I release all of them open source. Oops, we're not in the plugins. Let's go to software, plugins. We'll scroll down here. You're going to see if I uh, select my name here, DJ Schurz, uh, these are all the plugins I've created. So I have Oculus Rift, uh, Dynamexel, uh, TCP Client. So all these different plugins will demonstrate how I have done different things because the open source code is available. All right, including uh, how to save servos to the project, how to save information. For example, even with the Oculus Rift, I click on the details here and we scroll down through my my plugin, get down here to the bottom, and there's the link to the source code. All right, so you don't uh, don't be shy to start peeking into my source code and see how I'm I'm doing things. And that's about it. Uh, I guess I'll see your plugin on the website soon.